let's get into what we have for today and see if we can share God's word on that. I actually want to teach on what, you know, I've already set a template for the month. What did we look at last week? Spirit led. How you can be led by the spirit. And it's an important one. Um, I believe in the course of the year, at some point, we'll talk more about details concerning the leading of the spirit. You're right. Um, but we just said a couple of things last week. Um, about three major line items that we discussed last week. Talked about we siding in with the word of God. Right? Not confessing against it. Believing it. Acting it out. Confessing it. Believing it. You're right. Don't be anxious that you will not be led. Mm -mm. What about if you are led? Right? Think about it that way. Don't think in the negative. Think about it in the positive. Because the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. Right? So, believe that. I hear the voice. I don't believe I will not be led. I don't. That has been out of my heart for a long time. If there is a major decision, either God will, by default, lead me through it, or he will give me wisdom on how to go through it, in terms of specific. Right? Is either by one way or the other, I won't even know one way or the other, I'll just make decisions that will be right. I will coincidentally make right decisions, <laughs> whether I like it or not. It's actually difficult. One of the things you also said was to pray in tongues well. It's difficult actually to make a major blunder when you pray in tongues a lot. Remember Jesus when he appeared to Paul going to Damascus in Acts 9. He said it is difficult to kick against the pricks. Or to kick against the gods, whatever that, <laughs> that pronunciation is. G-O-A-D-S. But what actually, actually means is... There's a, it's, it's an agricultural term that was used, <clears throat> excuse me, at the, at the time being, of something where, right, to create like a fence around for animals, sometimes they put a fence and create like uh, putting the sharp object to just help to keep animals. So when you were saying you, it's hard to kick against, you can't keep kicking against the wall. If you pray in tongues often, you, you will know what to do. You will know. You will, you will know. You will know what to do. So, right, side in with God's word. Acknowledge that you are going to be led, right? Pray in the spirit often. And we also said, walk in the light of that you have now. Walk in the light of the written word. Walk in love. Walk in patience. Walk in long suffering. Walk in those things. Walk in the spirit. Galatians 5, 6. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lost after the spirit, and the spirit after the flesh. These are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. It says, but if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Right? And then he went ahead, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, all that. Right? So, if we walk in line with the spirit in that sense, that same spirit that leads us to walk a consecrated life, to walk a holy life will also lead us in all the affairs of life. Amen. But I want to go a step further. Remember that you are still talking about the general theme of unshaking. The bottom line of which is, you know, we getting into fruitfulness. Uh, Genesis 49, 22, the blessing on, jo on Joseph. Fruitful bow, fruitful bow very well. Branches run over the walls. The archers shoot, you know, they hated and all that. But your bow remained in strength. Your hand was strengthened by the hand of the God of Jacob, from where the shepherd is and all that. So the bottom line of the entire series is the fact that we are fruitful people as a result of the blessing of the Lord and as a result of the covenant that we have in him. We looked at all of that and how we can believe for fruitfulness. And then, you know, we said a lot also about it. Um, but now I want to also get down into some practicality where fruitfulness is concerned and talk about the hand of the diligent, the hand of the diligent, the hand of the diligent. There's such a thing as being diligent in your work. Work is not a curse. Work was given to man by God. When God made Adam, he gave him work to cultivate the earth, right? To cultivate the garden. So work is not something that is strange. It is actually part of the plan of God. 
in John 5 and verse 19, Jesus said, my father walks hither too, and so do I. So his father is working, he is working, the Holy Ghost is working, you have to work. You know, in 2 Thessalonians 3, Paul was talking to the Thessalonian church, and you know, some people had decided to be disorderly among them. And then he wrote to them in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, if we could read from that, and told them that they shouldn't be disorderly. It shouldn't be disorderly. 2 Thessalonians 3 from verse 6. 2 Thessalonians 3 from verse 6. It says, But we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walked disorderly and not according to the tradition which you received from us. What tradition? Verse 7. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you. So what about this disorderliness? Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might not be burdened, might not be a burden to any one of you. So to walk disorderly is to be without work. God has planned it at every Every single person should have something that he's doing. Every single person. Every single person. It's actually the platform upon which God can bless. God's blessing doesn't happen in a vacuum. God's blessings happen when you lay your hands upon something to do. When you lay your hands upon something to do. And so at every single point, we all must get ourselves busy. You know, there's, there's this thing, especially for um the gen z's about waiting on the right kind of job and about you know praying to god for the right thing for what to do exactly and in the bit to wait you are waiting doing nothing we are led by what the spirit of god tells us as much as what we see in the plan of God in the scriptures. A good example, for instance, Paul was on a missionary journey. I think this Acts, Acts, what is this now? Is it Acts 14, 15? When he was going to go into Bithynia, 16. When he was going to go into Bithynia, into Asia, and the Spirit of God held him bound. Now, Paul didn't say, you know what, the Spirit of God hasn't told us the next place to go. Let's sit down and let's wait for the Holy Spirit to talk. No. The Lord already told them, go into all the world. So keep going. Keep going. If I don't want you to go somewhere, I'll withdraw, my, I'll withdraw, I'll withdraw you back. I'll alert you that you shouldn't. So the general plan is that you should work. If God doesn't want you to be somewhere, that is when you should be waiting on him. If you don't want me to do this thing, tell me. But as long as you don't tell me anything specifically, I'll just do whatever comes. I'll take an advantage of every opportunity. It's almost like ministry too, for instance. You know, some of us are just starting ministry. Some others are far gone in ministry. For those starting into ministry, for instance, you get an invitation to come preach. And I say, you know what, let me check my calendar. Let me wait on God to see if I'm going to preach. What am I, what are you waiting on God for? Is there any other place you have to preach? Even if they invite you to bed there to preach, you'd better go there and preach. Do you understand what I'm saying? Take an advantage of all the opportunities that you have. Now, yes, as you get along in, you know, in the plan of God for your life, there will be demand on you to get into the specifics of what God wants you to do exactly. Are we still together here? You get into the specifics of the plan of God. What will engage you? Something that tallies with, you know, is um, deposits in you. And you can go in that lane. But at the start, you know, God will allow everybody to do anything. In all labor, there is profit. In all labor. So there's no such thing as, you know what, I'm just waiting for specifics. In a sense, that's, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Which one are you doing right now that you're waiting for specifics? God does not make do with idle hands. He doesn't. He doesn't make do with idle hands. All right? So he, he wants everyone to get busy. There is no disciple that Jesus chose that was idle. Ever wondered why Jesus didn't go into the temple to go and fetch for himself disciples? People who already can chant psalms. People who already can, you will know about the Old Testament. Why did he go to call him Matthew the tax collector who was busy doing stuff? Why did he go to call people who were busy at the deep of the sea with Zebedee? That was a major conglomerate. That was a major company because they had hired servants. Peter and his partners, right? They had hired servants. They were doing all of that. And Jesus called them. Every single person that called Paul, God met him while he was doing 
how be it against the church, but he was called while he was at the, at the work, doing something. I guess that's even one of the reasons the Lord would have said, you know what, I'm going to use this guy. Because he showed passion, showed faithfulness to the cause, showed loyalty to the cause. You know, got letters to go and persecute. He didn't wait for the people to, for people to come and say, you know what, we need to persecute. He by himself started the whole thing. So God said, this one, if you don't stop him, he will, he will keep on persecuting the church. <laughs> so let's convert his energy. Let's convert his energy. So work is actually part of God's plans. What you are doing now may not exactly be what you want to do. But you see, that's the avenue by which God is going to extend blessings to you. He says, whatsoever he lays his hands on. What are your hands laid on? What are your hands laid on? And for those who have something doing, you can also trust God for the blessing of God to come upon the thing. Can trust God for the blessing of God to come upon it. But, you right, the first thing that we need to understand is that God's plan is that everyone's hand should be at something. Should be involved with something. Sometimes you even have to be on your job while you are trying to do something the Lord has placed on your heart. The reward for work, guess what? Is more work. You won't work and God will not say, you know what? It's time to retire. God do not lie. <laughs> he won't. As long as you are here, because there are people benefiting from that work. Things are being moved forward. It gives an opportunity for the blessing of God to come. It gives an opportunity for you to exercise your God-given creativity. Because there is the light of God on your inside. How do you express that? But that you are doing something. That's the platform by which that happens. It's the platform by which you would also win souls. There are some people by reason of what I'm doing, I will never meet them. It's a bro Joseph that will meet them. Because of the result of what he's doing. He's getting into certain quarters, getting into certain rooms that I may never be able to get into. There are certain rooms that I will never step into, but an usher I will step into the room. It will be there. And God wants to sprinkle us like that every, everywhere in all spheres of influence. Why? Because he has everyone in, the, in, in his mind. Yesterday we were training and teaching about one of the things we said was the fact that God, God is big on souls. See, he's so big on souls that he does not have any other thing that he's doing apart from that. Souls. How people can come to the knowledge of Christ and how those who have come to the knowledge of Christ can be grounded and established in the knowledge of Christ, not just for the sake of knowledge, for the sake of the fact that we want to send you back out and bring more people in. Even when he was on earth, Jesus said there is more sheep that I need to go and bring into the fold. So, your work gives you platform to meet people. We saw the testimony of Pastor Joshua yesterday. Of how the CEO of a particular company came into the church. Because it, it, some other people may not have that platform. Your work is your platform for good. And we need to have that sense of ministry even where your work is concerned. Where you are, what you are doing is concerned. I checked the epistles, and we'll get to that, where we're going to read some verse from scriptures about what the Bible encourages servants. In our day and age, we can say employees, to do with their relationships with reference to their employers or masters, even if they are evil. The Bible never encourages rebellion, never encourages disobedience, never encourages rudeness, as in, in plain sight, plain words, not in parables, plain words. You know why? It's a platform. It's a platform. It's a platform. Your work is your platform. That is where you are the, you are the preacher. Different people will appear in different rooms. Some in seminar rooms, some in classrooms, some in boardrooms. But there is a room God wants you to step into. And once you are in that room, you are to be the light of the world there. You are to be the salt of the earth there. You are to be there. I am not to be there just to, just to, you know, 
just to be there. And, you know, there's a sense in which you can just do your work in, with and carry your work with levity, with lightness. But the truth of the matter is you shouldn't because you are God's ambassador to them. You are God's ambassador to them. You are God's ambassador to them. You meet people on a daily basis. That is our platform to reach out to them. You have clients that come to you. That you want to get it to a place where even your customers and your clients will be like, what, what about you? What is, what is it with you? Why is yours just different? Why is yours just exceptional? And it will take work. Grace is not a substitute for work. And in actual fact, for good work, excellent work, grace is not a substitute for it. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Paul said, I've, I've received, I'm what I am by the grace of God, right? And he says, I labored more. You will think that now that you've received the grace of God, you will just chill. And you'll just be like, I received the grace of God. And so I just, I just flew on the wings of grace. You know, sometimes when we talk about that wings of grace, you just feel like, ah, come on, bad Wings of grace. Oh, but just when you're seeing wings of grace, be seeing yourself sleeping at 3 a.m. sometimes. That's wings of grace. The grace is so that you can sleep at 3 a.m. That's the grace. <laughs> Some people feel the grace is to ease off, to, you know, to help them to soft pedal. Mm -mm. The grace is to help you to hard pedal. The grace is to make sure that when you usually get tired at 12, you can, get, you can sleep sometimes at 2, 3, and be awake again by 6, and you wouldn't feel it. And it will help you. It's a platform, and we need to take this seriously. But some people are not, they don't think of the fact that they are believers until they come to church until, the, until Sunday. Sunday we wear good clothes, we all come to church, we're looking good, we're looking nice, and then we do church. But when we get out there, yeah, we are out there. When we are talking, say, see, bros, this is a serious talk. Uh, Bible, Leno, leave, let's leave Bible. This is, we are being serious. So, when God was talking, he's, he's on serious. He's, was God on serious? His word still is truth. His word is truth. His word is truth. It's a platform for us to exercise our God-given character and for us to preach the gospel. Let me also say this, that as much as good character is major, it's essential, it's a pointer for people, it will be as though you are an epistle being read by all men. It's important. But let me also say this, that eventually, it is still through the preaching of the gospel that people will be saved, not through good character. God hasn't chosen that by the foolishness of good character that men will be saved. Mm -mm. It is still by the foolishness of preaching. When your character is good, be bold enough at the point where you see that, look, this is a good time to sow seeds. Sow the seed. Are we together? Sow the seed. Sow the seed. Sometimes there is right before us an open door of a conversation that you should have sown like 25 seeds back to back, pa, 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 in the hearts of the person. But you just, you just sleep on it. <laughs> And the opportunity just eludes. No, that's why you are in the room. Someone comes and says, I don't even know. I don't know. My house is just, things are just upside down. And you, you are there. You are there. You are there in the room. There. And all you can say is, ah, it's not only you. Ah! Ah! No! That was a doorway for you to sow the seed. Jesus took advantage of such opportunities. The Samaritan woman came to the well and started conversing. And Jesus started from the well there. He said, give me water to drink. The woman looked at me, which one is water to drink? Are you not a Jew? I'm a Samaritan. You know we don't talk. We know we don't just. Uh, Jesus said, no, because you don't know anything. Hey, if you know the person that's talking to you and what the person is able to give you, say so you will, you will by, by force just tell me to give you water. And the water I will give you, you will never test again. So I was like, uh -uh, Oga. So you, number one, you don't even have a drawer. So number two, from where do you even want to fetch this water that you are talking to me about? I don't ask the confession. You say that I perceive that you're a prophet. Take advantage of those rooms. Take advantage of those conversations. Take advantage of those. Take advantage of your hands being laid on people. Are you with me today? Take advantage of some things. 
Someone comes and says, you know what? I always have my green when it is 2 o'clock. And you are there. We teach on healing. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast the devils. Speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. It says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You are there and you can't do it. You can't even pray the prayer of faith. No, you can't be like that. You can't be like that. No, many people talk about how that this, you know, this Nigeria is full of Christians everywhere. You know, and but why is Nigeria still the way it is? It's because a lot of the Christians are not yet trained. They are not trained. Jesus only had 120 trained hands. 120. And they got the job done. It's training to know what to respond, how to respond. He said he has woken me morning by morning. He has given me the tongue of a learned to know how to speak. There is a how a believer speaks. Your work is your platform. To be able to exercise all your God-given deposits and all your God-given abilities. Work is different from toiling. I actually don't like the word hustle. Because it sends that subtle communication that you are doing. To, to hustle means you are doing a whole lot. But you are not getting a commensurate value for what you are putting in. And that is toiling. That is the curse of the law. That's a curse. That's not the blessing. But we have the blessing. Someone say, I have the blessing. Say it real good. Say, I have the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are not permitted to just, we're not permitted like Peter to toil all night catching nothing. When it seems as though that, that comes, take advantage of God's word, of God's authority, of the gathering together of the saints to break that cycle. We are not to toil, we are to work and the blessing of God is supposed to come upon our work. Let's say a few things about um, some of the things that we see in the, in the epistles concerning servant um, employee employer uh, relationship. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Let's start from there. We'll just read a few of them. First Peter 2 and verse um, 18. First Peter chapter 2. And verse 18. It says, servants, be submissive to your own masters. With all, can we read this from the NIV? All of the, all of the, the places I'm going to read. If you can have us in the NIV. Mm. Do you have NLT? There's a particular word I'm looking for. Do you have NLT? There is, is there anything else message now that talks about, okay, let's go back to the NIV. Let's go back, let's use the NIV. Oh, praise God. It says, slaves or servants or employees, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. This verse of scripture looks harsh already. Ah. Say, slaves, submit yourself in reverent fear to your masters. And this was not exactly in a time where there were codes of conduct. There were this, you know, there's even still in our day and time some conduct around relationship in the workplace. This was servanthood. Um, the Spirit of God, by, from Peter, was telling the people, submit, 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 submit. Not only to those who are good and considerate, because that's easy. It says even to those who are harsh. Next verse. It says, for it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering. <laughs> because they are conscious of God. Verse 20. But how is it to your credit? If you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it, 
But if you suffer for doing good and you endure and you enjoy it, it is commendable before God. So he's saying, even when it is tough, even when it is tough, to this you are called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. So we see that. Colossians 3.22. Colossians 3.22. Be there. So slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it. Not only when their eye is on you. And to curry their favor. Both with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. So it's telling us that even our work is a platform. It's a platform. And then it says whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for human masters. Not for human masters. 24. Knowing that from the Lord, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. That is, even in your workplace, serve as though it is Christ that is your employer. Serve as though it is Christ that is your employer. Praise the Lord. Colossians 4.1. This is also to the masters, to the employers. It says, masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair. Because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Verse 2. Okay, verse 2 is a different thought. A different thought. It says, provide your slaves with what is right. You have a team of people working for you. Don't, let's read Leviticus 19.13. Leviticus 19.13. This is one that they're supposed to be reading for C-suit managers when they're training, training for them. It says, observe my Sabbath and have reverence for my sanctuary. I'm the Lord. No, this is not what I asked for. 19.13. 19.13. Not 19.30. Do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. <laughs> do not do what? Hold back the wages of a hired servant overnight. See, these are scriptures. It seems the, 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 the route God has been leading me this month is a very interesting route. <laughs> it's a very interesting route of things that you would not necessarily feel that you know, you will hear from a word of faith. You want to hear God will do it. Oh, yes, the promises of God are yes. And you will hear that we'll preach that, but we'll also preach this one as well. Because the word of God is corrective in nature. It's corrective in nature. This is not the time to be defrauding people. This is the time to be. You, have, you, you may not have a, 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 a place where, you know, a company where you have employers but you have people who, you know, for instance, your maid, right? Your security, your gate man, all of that, your driver. God died for them as well. God died for them as well. They may not have had the opportunity that you had. Some of them, if they had the same opportunity you, they, that you had, they would have done better than you. They have the potential to even be better. But they just didn't. And you see, the poor we will always have around us. Even the Bible said that. Jesus said that. The poor we will always have. And God expects that we live the kind of life that will be a reflection on him. That will be well pleasing to him. Walking of the Lord fully pleasing unto him. Let's look at some more. Ephesians 6 5 as a wrap, wrap up. Ephesians 6 5, look at a few more. Ephesians 6 5, and then we'll look at Titus 2. He says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart. So you see, this is everywhere almost in the epistles. We've read from Peter, we've read from Ephesians, we've read from Colossians. We went to the Old Testament, saw it in Leviticus. We see that again. Titus 2 9 and 10. In fact, 9 to, to, okay, to 10. 9 to 10. Titus 2, 9 to 10. 
teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, not to talk back at them, not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted so that in every way they will make the teaching of God about God our Savior attractive. So it means there's a way we can live in such a way that we won't make the teaching of God attractive. We won't make it easy for the seed of God to be sown in their hearts. Because some of them will be like, if this is what it looks like to serve God, this is what it looks like to be a Christian, I think I'm even better off the way I am. But we must be a bonus. We must be a plus. Not subtracting from the gospel of Christ. Not subtracting from the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. And another thing I want to mention with reference to having the hand of the diligent is to understand, this was also said yesterday by Pastor Joshua, about collaborative work, about teamwork, especially in church and of course not just in your local church but i mean among among believers collaborative work teamwork and mentorship there is a whole lot that we will benefit from one another there's a whole lot that we can benefit from one another just as a result of what is going on i think it was was it brochola for you know that was just sharing at some point about how Almost everything that he needs, he finds a solution for it right here. There's someone that is, that is right here. And that's the reason why you can't be in a local church and be exempt, exempting yourself from what is going on around. You will be shocked that the next big deal that needs to come from you is somewhere from this church. Are you here? You may be shocked. You've been looking for stuff all around. But you may be just be shocked that there's someone here who can be the solution. And that is why, look, I'm a firm believer that there is within an assembly, there is always to a great degree the solution to many needs within a particular assembly. To a great degree. To a great degree. This is not a time for us to, to come to church and then leave as soon as I do closing prayer. Inter, inter, intermingle, you know. <laughs> Speak with people. Talk with people. Shake hands. What do you do? You have data to analyze now. You want to, your company is looking for this thing. I are taking our market out. If you know what I'm talking about. You want to say, well, I want to do this one. Or you want to do audit somewhere. I are taking our market out. Something that maybe is a 500 million budget, for instance. Something that we should have gotten tight from it. You are taking away from us. Simply because either you are in offense or you've just chosen to be unconnected for some reason or the other. You can't choose to be offense. Look, as long as you're in church, let me say this. There is no perfect church anywhere. Even if there was a perfect church, the moment you joined, it became imperfect. <laughs> the moment you joined, it just became imperfect. There is none anywhere. We all have our emphases, and we all have our proclivities, and we all have our weakness. We are a work in progress. But guess what? We are still God's children. We are still God's children. Someone offended you in church, and that's why you are staying out of church. Why don't you change your son's name? Are you saying that your daddy has not offended you before? <laughs> or your siblings have not offended you before? Why don't you delete their numbers? You see the same year, I say, ah, Egmo, Egmo, I've travel, I told you I want more. But you are the one that still feels that no matter how much, you know, you, you have a rift or a friction, you still judge that, look, look, we are, we are eventually, we are brothers. Yeah, that's all water on the bridge. And we can't do the same thing in church. Can't do the same thing in church. Sometimes I get to talk to people and you can see that they are speaking from a place of offense. A, a place of being stung. Say, I've been offended. Do you think I'm not the one that has been offended? I'm not, do you think I'm an angel? And some people talk as though you are the ones that have flesh to deal with. Yeah, you people, I've been offended. So all of us, you think all of us here like this. 
We've not been offended. <laughs> My wife tries to caution me a lot on when, when, you know, what I say in church. She does a lot of that for me, you know, in the house. And God bless her heart. So the way you said this, you know, I thought you could have been. So at one point, I told her, I said, Madam, that's where I have said it. Stop disturbing me. I have anybody that wants to be offended, that is the person's market. I have said it and I've said it, and that's the end. <laughs> because like, why will I be watching my words and what's your stepping on eggshells? Because you want to deliver God's word. That's how the word came. <laughs> the spirit inspired it. Was it not Pig Paul that said, Oh foolish Galatians? Who bewitched you? He said, Who swear for you like this? <laughs> Paul the apostle said it. What I'm saying is, let's have a large heart. Let's have a large heart. We are all God's children. We are all God's children. The basis of our belief as, a, as, as Christians is that Jesus died for us. He rose for my sins. By one baptism, I've been saved. If you believe that, we can relate. We can relate. That's all I need to relate. From wherever you're coming from. So let's have a large heart. Uh, let's have, I said something one day, and I'm going to repeat it also here, that we need to develop what is called thick skin. Don't be quick to get offended. Don't be quick. Don't be too sensitive. It's the way she said it for me. What about it? What, what about it? You got the message right. Leave all of that. It's the way he said it. You, the way you have been saying your own God. Let's have a large heart to accommodate people and accommodate excesses. Look, this, I deal with people from a sense of I believe the best of you. And this is it. If you offend me, offense is too much an item. I can't afford it. So even if you bring it, I've said it before. Offense, where offense is collect, con, you know, concerned, don't give it and don't take it. That's it. Don't give it. And when they give you, don't take it. Don't receive offense. Oh, you know, I noticed that I've been greeting this person and she has been using notes to greet me. You will be shocked what I hear. Either directly or indirectly. He has been greeting me with her nose. Greeting me with his nose. Number one, have you even told him that? It seems that his nose usually used to greet me. <laughs> Can you please greet me with your mouth, not your nose? <laughs> Don't greet me with your nose, please. And you will harbor that. Even the person that is greeting with nose. Don't know that, that is, his nose he used to greet everybody. It's not just you. So, be large-hearted. If he greets you with nose, you greet with mouth. One day, maybe we will influence the person and he will stop greeting with nose. But you understand what I'm saying? Let's have a large heart. Let's have a large heart. Let's have a large heart. Let's walk in love. Let's prioritize walking in love. Don't be easily offended. And when they offend you, in a short while, forget it. In a short while, forget it. Don't be quick to wrath. Don't be quick to wrath. Don't be. Hallelujah. These are some of the things that will help us in line with fruitfulness. You see fruitfulness I'm talking about? Who? Because part of fruitfulness, John 15, the Bible says that Jesus prunes the branch that is fruitful so that it becomes more fruitful. The pruning process is not a an easy process it's not a sweet process to prune is to cut off so there's some excesses that we will need to cut off some excesses that we need to cut off and god will help us hallelujah hallelujah praise god someone say i'm a fruitful bull let's learn to walk in love and let's learn to collaborate with ourselves. Let's learn to collaborate with ourselves. One of the things we plan to do this year is to be able to 
have a platform that helps us know the, the, the available enterprises within the local church so that it can help it can help you that it can help you you need someone to help you design something 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 an architect here and there we have that here in church you want to learn such and such and such we have that here in church look whether you like it or not everybody needs a community one tree does not make up a forest it has never and it will never the moment we begin to realize that the person next to you is as important as any other person and that you should deal with that person in honor in respect and with love the better it will be for us we will be able to reap more harvest more harvest more walk into our more that way that I'm not just concerned about myself and my family I'm concerned about you and your family as well about your children that kind of unity will always bring you a whole lot remember the early church there was that sense of unity among the church the Bible says none of them lacked none none of them lacked in a church of over 5,000 people none of them lacked why? There were people who were open to the Spirit of God leading them in the place of love. The place of love. In collaborating to do things. In finding mentors. In being accountable. This is part of it. And I know God will help us. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise for your word that is living and powerful. Thank you for the corrective nature of your word to us this morning. We bless your name. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next week I'm going to be talking and it's going to